In today's video, you'll learn how to optimize images on your WordPress website using a plugin. I'll show you how to do this and I'll show you the performance benefits you can get from doing this. If you've ever noticed in Google PageSpeed Insights, sometimes you get the issue serve images in next gen formats. This will actually resolve this by changing the images to WebP format. Now WebP is actually 25 to 30% smaller than comparable JPEG and ping images. Guys, let me know in the comments, are you using WebP? Because only 13% of websites currently use WebP, even though 96% of browsers actually support WebP now. So it's probably a good time to look at changing over if you haven't already, or your major actual image editing software supports WebP by now. Uh, Microsoft Photos added it last year and um, Photoshop has supported it for the last couple of years. So there's no reason to actually not look at changing over. So for this example, I'm gonna actually try optimizing three different test websites. I've got this one that has a big uh, high resolution background image right at the top of the page here. I've got another one that has, um, I think a five or six small to medium size images here that we're gonna optimize. And the last one is a lightweight page. It's mainly text, but there are a couple images here. These are fairly uh, small images that have been already optimized for JPEG, but I'm gonna convert them to WebP and see how much improvement we get. Now there are quite a few image optimization plugins for WordPress. Let me know in the comments if you are using any of them, but today we're gonna to use Image Optimizer by Elementor. All three of our test websites are Elementor websites. I know most of you currently use Elementor for your WordPress design, so that's what I'm gonna to use today. Um, I'd recommend this one if you are using Elementor because I have native support for Elementor. You can find that by searching for Image Optimizer by Elementor. You can test it out for free and I've already installed it and activated it. So I've got that here and I can actually go to our settings. If I head to Install Plugins and I've got Image Optimizer here under Settings there. So this plugin is really easy to use. In most cases, you can leave all the settings on default. I will go through some of these settings for you briefly before we go ahead and optimize all our images. Basically, we can just go ahead and press this button, optimize all, and it's gonna optimize all the images in our media library. So first up, we've got the compression level here, lossless and lossly. Uh, most cases you wanna use lossy. Um, that will give you the best, most lightweight file sizes. It does reduce the quality, but the quality won't be visible to the human eye. Um, unless you actually zoom in on the image, you won't see a change. Uh, there may be some photographers who want like, the maximum quality of the image uh, for their portfolio. So you may wanna choose lossless in those situations, but in most cases we'll go with lossy. Optimize new uploads. That means every time the user uploads loads an image into the media library, it's gonna optimize it. It's also gonna create that WebP version to give you that lighter file size. Resize larger images. This one will um, set a maximum size. So this is 1920. So 1920 by 1080 is your typical 1080 resolution, which is good for most screen sizes. I'd recommend leaving it at that. Um, clear XF metadata. Um, if you turn that on, it will strip out the date and time and location data from the image. Now, in most cases, that's okay. Some people might wanna turn that off um, for search engine optimization for local business websites. You may get some search engine optimization benefits from leaving the metadata in the image. That's debatable whether it helps or not, but um, if you are worried about that, turn it off. But in most cases, leave that one turned on. And back up the original image. This will create backups of the original image if you wanna roll that back. You could, alternatively, you could just create a backup of the whole website before you run this bulk optimization. Um, I'm gonna leave that one on, but if you've got space, it's fine to leave that on. If you're limited in space, you may wanna turn it off, but in most cases, leave it on. Um, convert to WebP, definitely leave that on because that's the whole point of the exercise. WebP is gonna give us those performance benefits. File optimization is an interesting one here. By default, it's gonna optimize all the sizes of WordPress's images. WordPress creates thumbnails, medium and large, medium large images for all the images in the image library. Um, also, you've got your original sizes there. There may be some cases where you might wanna turn off the large ones. You might wanna just have the smaller sizes optimized and then leave these ones in full quality, um, like a photography website, for example. But in most cases, you just wanna leave it all sizes turned on there. And finally, under advanced here, you can restore the original images. If case something happens, um, if there's a failure of some sort, you can restore it back to how it was. Um, but if everything works well and you're happy with the new images, you can actually remove the backups permanently to save space there. And that's pretty much it. So once you're ready to run, we can go up and go ahead and hit that button, optimize all, and that's gonna run through all our images and give us um, our new high performance image optimized website. So basically let's just let this run. It does take a few minutes to get through all these images. The good thing about this is um, this is all optimized 
on a remote server. So it doesn't uh, actually load your own web server, which is really important. A lot of these sort of plugins that do a bulk file optimization, are gonna stress out your server. You might actually have server um, performance degradation, but this is not gonna affect your own server performance. This is gonna be running on an Elementor server, um, offloading all the load. So um, your server and website performance is not gonna be affected while this is running, but this does take a while. So I'm gonna come back when this is all complete. All right, so I'm back. This is on 100%. Uh, this took about 10 minutes and all our images are now optimized. Now anything we upload as well is gonna be optimized automatically. So this is all we need to do on the plugin side. So I basically repeated this on all three of our websites here, this one, this one, and this one. And now we can go ahead, run these through Google PageSpeed and check the results. So our first one was a 95 on desktop and a 72 on mobile. So already decent, but it actually improved a bit here. So we went to an 83 on mobile and a 96 on desktop. So this site actually had that whole full page background there. So on mobile, it improved quite a lot, 72 to 83. This one was probably the most improvement out of the three websites. Um, the size dropped dramatically because it was an unoptimized JPEG. Um, the size of the total page dropped by... Um, 7750 down to 382 um, K. So nearly a 50% reduction in page size there. And our largest contentful paint uh, improved. That's an important core metric, um, core web vital, um, two seconds faster in this case. Um, nearly um, five and a bit seconds down to three and a bit seconds. So quite a good improvement with that one. I'm gonna focus on mobile here um, because those were the ones that had the most improvement. Mobile improvement for site number two here went from um, 78 to 82. So a smaller improvement, but still good. Um, about a 20% reduction in size there from 814K down to 649K. The total page size uh, reduced and our largest content for paint improved by 0.6 seconds. So still a very good improvement, even on a site with smaller images, um, still a pretty good improvement. And for our third page that already had small images already optimized um, for mobile, um, in this case, it stayed on 92. So it didn't actually change the page speed. There was a small reduction in size, just going by um, from a small JPEG to a small WebP. It went down from 354 down to 330. So a 7% reduction um, in page size. So that's not nothing. Um, it wasn't really enough to actually have, um, change the core metric in terms of its um core web vital speed, it was a smaller change than 0.1 seconds. So it didn't actually change the um, uh, core metric in terms of its loading speed, but um, still an improvement in terms of its um, page size there. Now, the thing about image optimization, it is a resource intensive process. It uses up a lot of CPU to process all those images. So there typically is a cost involved with these plugins. There is a free trial with Elementor's version. You can do 250 image credits. Um, and it scales up depending on how many image credits you need. So I should also add, like we talked about earlier, each image in the media library typically has five um, versions of the image, thumbnail, medium, medium, large, large, and the full size. So if you divide this by five, that, that is how many um, images in your media library it is equivalent to. So that would be like a thousand images and so on. The thing I quite like about these paid plans is all of the paid ones are useful on unlimited websites on each of the costs there. So that's really quite good. Really aimed at agencies where you're trying to maintain a large number of websites. You don't have to add a license for each one of the websites that you're maintaining. If you were to compare this to the other competitors, you've got um, WPMU Dev has Smoosh. Um, to get unlimited site license, it's 20 a month. So it is a bit more in terms of cost, but you do get unlimited um, image optimization there. Matt Plugins has a similar agency level deal here, 840 for 250 a year. So I think the Elementor one's a little better in that case where you get 1 million for 200. And finally, the other popular one is Ooh Image Optimizer. Again, a little bit more expensive at the top level for 250 a year, but that does give you unlimited sites there. So um, 400 gigabytes of bandwidth. The Elementor one is not bandwidth limited, but it is image limited. So a little bit different the way they do their pricing with you. So those are the um, ones you're comparing to. I think if you're using Elementor, just go with the Elementor one, just for the native um, integration with Elementor is really quite valuable in itself, I think. All right, now we're ready for our conclusions. After testing this on three different sites, we saw performance uh, improvements across the board there. So I can definitely recommend updating your images to WebP if you have the chance. It's supported on 96% of browsers now, so there's no real reason to not go ahead and do that on all your WordPress websites. And for those of us using Elementor, definitely recommend using the Image Optimizer by Elementor to do the optimization for you. Very quick 
seamless process, doesn't put any strain on your web server. And the pricing was pretty competitive with the competitors as well. So would recommend that plugin. I've got the link in the description if you want to check that out. But uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you updated your sites to WebP yet? Let me know. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.